Hi everybody. I am, uh, thought I'd just get on here for a little bit because I'm making some envelopes out of some painty paper that I made yesterday. So, um, I thought I'll just chat with you a little while while I'm doing that. And, uh, I'll tell you about my, uh, great goat escape while I'm working on some envelopes. I uh, took some little envelopes apart and I just made a template out of it and I'm gonna make some small envelopes out of these painty book pages that I did yesterday while I was uh, sitting here at my table. So, um, anyway, yesterday while I was working on my papers here, I got, um, an, well, I'll start at the beginning. This is Friday, Wednesday, my goats got out. Now, you may have heard me mention it before that my goats were getting out, and I wasn't sure how. Well, Wednesday, they I went out to the chicken coop. I was out there just doing, you know, doing my chores. And I was at the chicken coop, and I look up, and here comes my goats down through the yard. And I have four goats, two pygmy goats, and two fainting goats. So... Anyhow, they came out through the yard, and so I started down towards, well, my little dog was out. My little dog, Rosie, was out, and she only weighs like four and a half pounds. She's a little chihuahua. And I was afraid they might trample her, so I wanted to hurry up and grab her and put her in the house before I went down to the barn. And, um, so I grabbed her, put her in the house, and while I was doing that, my, my house cat, Lucky, he escaped. He ran out the door, well then he saw the goats, so he ran under, um, our side-by-side, -side, and he was hiding under there, and I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna get down on the muddy ground to get him, I'll just wait, put my goats away, and then I'll come back and get him. So... But as I was putting Rosie away, I guess the goats got bored waiting for me because I wasn't immediately heading down to the barn. And when I came around the side of the house, they were headbutting my hippie camper. All four of them. So I don't know what that was all about, but as soon as they saw me, of course, they start heading for the barn. Because what they really want is for me to feed them. I guess... Apparently, I wasn't there uh, quick enough for supper, and they were tired of waiting on me. So they just got out to remind me that um, it was time to eat. So I go down to the barn, and, you know, they have to be right there with you. They have to be, like, practically on top of you the whole time that you're walking, and... I get down to the barn, and Lily is standing beside me. That one goat was standing right beside me. And for whatever reason, Grizzy, the smallest of the goats, decides she's going to um, headbutt Lily. And she headbutted Lily and knocked Lily into me and about knocked me onto the ground. And... I could feel my back cramping up. I was like, oh, no. You know, this is going to hurt tomorrow. So, okay. I have this little piece of paper that's the inside of the envelope, so I can kind of fold it a little bit better. But anyway, so I got them fed. Got them back in the 
pasture and I was like, I've got to figure out where these goats are getting out. But it has been raining here again and snowing. And it's so muddy down there in the pasture that um, I don't want to go down and walk the fence right now. Because the here last week when I was down there moving the uh, water trough, I got stuck in the mud. I had all my mock boots. <laughs> but um, it was so soft. The ground was so soft. and it's, it's, There's a lot of clay here. And when it gets like that, it's like slime. And it's really soft and you'll sink right in it. And that's what happened to me. My right foot sunk clear in well past my ankle. And I couldn't get my foot out. <laughs> So I was um, I was stuck in the mud, and I had nothing to hold on to to try to pull myself out, and I was having <laughs> I was having a difficult time getting out of the mud. So and then I got to laughing because it was so ridiculous, and so I was out there in the middle of the field, you know, nobody around for quite a ways, <laughs> and uh, you know giggling and uh, finally I did free myself from the mud and I didn't fall in it thank goodness but anyway so that's what kind of keeps me from uh, wanting to go down and walk the fence right now to find out where they're getting out so I'm not I wasn't really too concerned about it they get out you know they get out I'll just put them back in Because they don't usually go anywhere. They just stay right here on the farm. They're just waiting for me to come out, that basically. <laughs> so yesterday, I'm sitting here at my craft table. That And yesterday was Thursday. And I get a little knock on my door. And I look out and there's no car, which was odd because this is not like a place you kind of walk into. And <laughs> so I open the door and... I, it's my neighbor. It's my new neighbor. She just moved in across the road. We live on like on a dirt road, and she just moved in across the road and, and, and up a little ways from my house. And she has a huge stick. I mean, a, this really big stick. And she's standing on my porch with four goats. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, oh no. So. I opened the door and she said, um, I'm really sorry, but, um, I wanted to bring your goats home. Your, your goats are loose. <laughs> and I said, I know they've been getting out. I really don't know what's going on. She said, well, um, the thing is, is they were over at my house and, um, they were head butting my house. I was like, oh my gosh, I was so mortified. I said, Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't believe they went over there. And she said, well, it wouldn't have been so bad if they weren't headbutting my house. So I said, well, did they, you know, do any damage? Because I'm like seeing in my mind, you know, them headbutting her, her siding. And she said, no, no, they didn't do any damage. But she said, and I tried to bring them over uh, one other time, but they, they followed me back home. So I was I was so embarrassed, but anyway. So I did, uh, I went outside then, and we started walking down towards the barn, and I was telling her how sorry I was, and you know I didn't know how they were getting out, and she um she said, oh no, that's okay, but I was like imagining in my mind. Can you imagine? You're sitting in your house, and all of a sudden you hear this. Bang, bang, bang. And you look out and there's four little goats out there just banging their heads off of your house. I was, oh, I was just, I was mortified. I'm just telling you. So, I, uh, I said to her, well, you know, the one, I don't really know why they would go over there. They usually just come up here to the house because they, they want me to feed them. I said, but, um. The one 
goat, and I pointed out which one it was. I said, actually, it used to live at your house, the house that you're living in. I said, there was a young man there that that lived there, and um, he uh, went away for a while, and he left the goat there. So I said, I uh, just brought it over to my house and put it in with my goats. And I said, so, you know, maybe Grizzy was just um, revisiting her old homestead, but, you know, and she's kind of the leader of the pack, so wherever she goes, they follow. And I said, I'm so sorry. And she said, well, that's all right, but it wasn't all right. It was, oh my gosh, that was terrible. I felt so bad. I could imagine how frightened she was, you know, I would have been put, you know, back a little bit if I uh, heard something banging on my house. So, anyhow, so I put them away and fed them. And I said to my husband when he got home from work, we have to do something. I have to figure out where these goats are getting loose. But I'm still in the same kind of dilemma. I don't want to walk the whole entire fence because of there being some really swampy muddy areas and um you know I don't want to get stuck out there <laughs> in the mud so oh I'll tell you it's just a three ring circus around here that's for sure so and I was feeling pretty good when I had gotten up Thursday morning. I was surprised I wasn't all stiff from the goat smacking into me. And I felt pretty good. And I thought, oh, I feel pretty good. And then later in the day, you know, sort of started catching up with me. So I'm hoping that it doesn't last too long. I don't want to have to give the chiropractor, but I may. And go and tell the chiropractor that I got butted by a goat. So, anyway, and I don't know, maybe they're bored, you know, spring, and they're kind of full of themselves, and uh, they don't really have anything to occupy their time over there in the pasture. I might have to get them, like, build them some kind of something to jump around on or something, but last year I tried to give them... Uh, those big rubber balls to, I thought, well, they'll, you know, play with them and uh, stuff. And what, <laughs> like I said, I have two feigning goats, and the go feigning goats were afraid of them. So if the ball came towards them, they fainted. <laughs> so, so that didn't work out like I planned either. It's a fiasco around here, I tell you. But, oh my gosh. <laughs> what is, I just felt so bad. For, I felt so bad for my neighbor. She's probably thinking, what kind of neighborhood did I move into? And, like, I don't really have neighbors that close to me. Or I hadn't had any neighbors that close to me till, um, since that young man was living there. And, um... And he's he hasn't lived over there for a while, so uh, I, you know, <laughs> I didn't have it to have to worry about my goats going over to the neighbors before, but apparently I do now. Oh my! Like I said, Grizzy Grizzy came from that house, and. Uh, I guess she was just revisiting her old home. That's how she, uh, well, when the, when the young guy lived over there and he had Grizzy over there, um, she would come over here and visit. You know, she would, she would come over and visit me. And I would just, let her wander around with me. 
uh, for a while until she started getting into mischief or something, and then I'd take her back over her home. And uh, I actually thought that it was a boy. I never looked. Um, I'm new to farming. <laughs> I never had goats before, and I've never had chickens before until I moved here. And so I um I don't know a lot about goats or chickens. I'm I'm learning. But anyway, I thought, oh, goats are so cute, you know. And the, and the grandkids they wanted feigning goats. And so I had gotten some feigning goats first. And. Um, and they were babies, you know, they were babies when I got them. They weren't that old. So anyway, but after, like I said, Grizzly lived over with this young guy that lived over there and she wandered around a lot, but I thought it was a boy. I, I never paid any attention, never looked. Yeah, um, it's a pygmy goat, and you know, they're kind of short. <laughs> Their legs are really short. And I never checked to see if it was boy, girl. I don't know. I, did, I just never looked. It had a beard. I guess I, that might have thrown me off. And I just assumed it was a boy. Never paid any attention. And I, uh, so when I went over and rescued her, I, again, just thought it was a boy, never really checked, which is sort of silly now that I think of it, but I didn't check, and um, so I had her over here for a while, and I was calling her Griswold, because, again, I thought it was a boy, and Several months went by, and then the young man came back. He came back, and he was actually moving out of the place. But I went over, and I said to him, you know, hey, I have your goat over at my house. Uh, while you were gone, I just thought, well, I'll put him in with my goats. And when you, you know, when I see you the next time, I'll let you know that your goat's over here, and you can come over and get it whenever you like. And he said, oh, you can just keep it over there, you know. And uh, so I said to him, well, what's his name? And he said, well, it's a girl. <laughs> and, I, and I was a little bit embarrassed. And I said, oh. And I kind of laughed. And I said, oh, okay, well, I never really checked. And uh, so I said, well, what's her name? And he kind of chuckled, and he said, her name's Larry. So <laughs> I said, okay. So he said, but you can just keep her. You know, I don't really have a place for her. You can just keep her. If she seems happy over there. You can keep her. So I said to my husband, well, now I can't call her Griswold. I'll have to call her something else. So I gave her the, her official name uh, is Mrs. Larry Griswold. But we just call her Grizzy. And, uh, but anyway, she just, she's quite a rascal. She's, I think, the littlest out of the group, even though I have another little pygmy goat. It's, it's, it, now that it's grown up, it's slightly bigger than, than Grizzy. But still, Grizzy's in charge. And she, she leads the pack and gets them into some, trouble, obviously. <laughs> I can't believe they were headbutting the neighbor's house. Oh, my. So, so, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm learning things as I go because, like I said, I, I never really had farm animals, although I, my grandmother had a farm, and I spent a lot of time on the farm. I didn't really know, you know, about chickens and all that kind of stuff. So, or, or goats. My grandmother didn't have goats. 
But I thought, oh, goats are so cute. And they are adorable. They're they're really cute and they're fun to watch, but oh, they can get into stuff. They really can. I kind of had a, a similar situation with a chicken because I had gotten chickens and I got some that were young. They weren't that old. They weren't old enough to tell the gender yet. Chickens are something that, you know, you sort of have to wait till they mature to tell whether they're hens or roosters. So, I, uh, I had gotten some chickens off of a, a girl I know that she had has tons of chickens out at her place. And she said, well, you know, I don't know. If you get a rooster, you can just let me know and I'll take it back and trade you for a hen. So I, I said, okay. But I just kind of looked at them and determined that I thought they were all hens. I did have a rooster at that time. I had a rooster named John Wayne. That my grandkids named it that. So, uh, anyway, as time went on, a few months went by, and suddenly, uh, <laughs> one of the rooster wouldn't let this chicken that I was calling Becky in the hen house. As soon as she went in there, he chased her out. You know, tried to beat her up. And uh, he wouldn't let her in. So she went down and she was living in this old dog kennel that we had. So... She would roost on top of the dog box. <laughs> and I said to my husband, I don't understand, you know, why he's throwing her out. Why he won't let her in with the other end. Well, you know, a few weeks went by and then I realized that it was because uh, Becky was n not a hen. And... So, John Wayne wasn't going to have any competition, so he kept throwing uh, him out. And, um, anyway, so, I thought, well, I can't call, call him Becky, so I was calling him Becker. And my husband was calling him Crazy Eddie. For whatever reason. <laughs> so. When I would say Becker. He'd say I don't know what you're. You know. Who, what, who are you talking about? And I'd be like. You know. The. The chicken living down there. In the old kennel. And he said. Uh, you know. Oh that's crazy Eddie. So. Now his. Official name is. Uh, uh, crazy Eddie Becker. <laughs> So we just call him Eddie now, <laughs> but he's uh, he's ruling the roost now because John Wayne uh, we had to get rid of because he it was so mean, and every time I went outside he flogged me, and I'd have to walk around with a stick or a broom or something, and I couldn't oh uh, I wouldn't dare turn my back on him as soon as I turned my back on him he'd flog me so. <laughs> Anyway, so we decided that, um, you know, it would be best to get rid of John Wayne. So we did, and uh, Eddie took over the uh, rooster duties, and uh, he's a really good rooster. He's never flogged me, <laughs> thank goodness, <laughs> or anyone. He's actually a really nice rooster. So, well, these are the 
the things you learn. You think it all sounds, you know, like so much fun when you <laughs> when you first start getting animals and you're like, oh, this is gonna be great. And it is great in a lot of ways, but then sometimes it's just trouble. Oh, it still looks like it's folded crooked. But anyway. So I'm hoping that uh, my husband soon has a day off so he can go with me to go down and find out what's going on with the fence and where they're getting out at. I think they might be scooting under the fence instead of, um, I don't think they're getting out over the fence. I think they're just scooting under it somewhere and I, I really can't figure out where. But oh, uh, well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> just hope they don't go over to the neighbors. I have to go run errands today and I'm really hoping that uh, I can keep, they'll stay in the fence until I get back, but, so I think I might throw over some extra hay. So I have some hay that uh, has a lot of alfalfa in it, so maybe that'll keep them busy for a while. And they won't, <laughs> they won't want to get out until I get home, so that, because I don't want them going over to the neighbors. Because once they go over there, I think they'll probably keep going. <laughs> I don't know. But she, she had this huge stick and she's like, I didn't hit your goats with the stick. I was just trying to lead them over here. I was like, you know, I was thinking to myself, if I uh, went out and four strange goats were headbutting my house, uh, I, I could almost hardly blame her for you know hitting them on the butt with a stick but <laughs> I was like oh my gosh oh my I had just met this lady like a couple of weeks ago. She, her and her husband moved over there, I don't know, maybe six weeks or so ago. And I went over, took some eggs over to her and introduced myself and, you know, told her I'm over there most of the time if you ever need anything and stuff. And... Oh, I had just met her at any able to talk to her one time. It's not the way to get to know the neighbors. She was really nice about it, but I felt so bad.
I'll glue all these together later. I thought I'd get them all ready, fold them up, and then I'll glue them. I have a bigger template, too, with slightly different envelope. This is kind of like a little square envelope. And, uh, so, I thought I'd make some envelopes for... I had made some other painty paper because I was kind of getting low on painty paper. I can't have that. So today's my errand day, and uh, so I gotta go do some grocery shopping. I'm gonna go get my nails done, and I have to go to the feed store. I have to go to the pharmacy to get gas in the truck down to the water station fill up, get some water and my because we have to um, carry water for the animals um, for the goats because there's no you know uh, water source down in their pasture uh, pasture so they uh, I have to have to bring up water and put in their tanks. There's been enough rain that it kept them kind of filled, but hopefully we're not going to have any rain for a little while again. It's going to get nice. It was terrible yesterday. It was just snowy, blow, you know, the wind was blowing. It's not cold enough for it to the snow to really lay on the ground. It just blows around and Makes everything wet and miserable. I think it's supposed to warm up some. Today it's going to be in the 50s, so that won't be too bad. And then I think it's start, going to start getting in the 60s again, so that'll be good. Well, that's good weather. The 60s and 70s are good weather. And last night I went out to um, close up my chicken coop and I heard a whippoorwill. Oh, I was so excited. Now I'm waiting, you know, anxious for it to be warm enough in the evening so I can sit out there and listen to the whippoorwills. Just love that. It reminds me of my dad because he just loved the whippoorwills. He would sit out there in the evening and just listen to the whippoorwills. So, I was excited to hear my first whippoorwill of the spring. I'll hear them all summer long. Bullfrogs. I've already heard some bullfrogs. And the fish are pretty active in the pond, jumping around. So, spring is here, even though it doesn't seem like it. It is here. I don't know if we could just get the actual weather to cooperate with us. 
Oh man, Winter just doesn't want to give up. Had a few nice days and then it got cold again. I have a lot of yard work to do. So I wanted to get nice so I can go out there and do some yard work. Plus I need that field to dry up. I don't want to get stuck in the mud anymore. <laughs> oh my. We didn't get a lot of traffic on our road, so it's not like somebody would uh, maybe come by and rescue me. I think I'm gonna get off here, get ready, because I have errands to run today, lots of errands. It takes all day around here because you have to go so far to get stuff. <laughs> so pretty much errand day is an all day thing. I got a few minutes to chat with you and uh, I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.